think I wasn't supposed to. Mae West that. once said, marriage is a fine institution, but I'm not ready for an institution yet. Hi, I'm Carol. Welcome to the June Bridal Edition of Girl Talk. We're here today to talk about marriage. What else for the month of June? I'd like to begin by reading a little bit from a book called Why Women Shouldn't Marry by Cynthia Smith. And she says, today there are only two basic reasons for a woman to marry, sperm and support. If you need neither of the above, why give up your freedom, adjust to another person's lifestyle, silence yourself to accommodate to a man's needs, become his domestic slave and emotional caretaker? Well, that, that says quite a lot, I think. And I'm joined today by three women who are married. So I'd just like to kind of open up the discussion with why you all got married. Do you all? Have any burning reasons why you got married? I know Rachel was saying a few minutes ago, we have Brides magazines here on the table. She was saying, oh, ever since high school, I was reading Brides magazine. And it seems like as girls, we're raised with a cultural expectation that we are going to grow up, meet Mr. Wright, and get married. Well, I sort of met Mr. Wright when I was in fourth grade. Everyone laughs about that. They say, oh, how sweet. Well, we you know, were friends when we were younger. And then his family went away to Germany. His father was military. And so he was actually gone through the early part of my teenage years. So I got to do some dating and that type of thing. And nothing very successful. I wasn't you know, gaga like, oh, the first guy I meet and fall in love with, oh, I'll marry him. But then when my husband, Scott, came back from Germany and I met him, things just clicked. And that's when I started getting into, you know, the Brides magazines. And I just knew, I mean, we're, we're soulmates. We do a lot of things together, but we still are two individual people. And I just can't imagine what it would be like not to have such a close friend, you know. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's, it's a relationship. It's not like, oh, I'm his, you know, I never felt like, oh, well, my parents are married, therefore I will grow up and be married. Really? Really. How about the rest of you guys? Did you grow up thinking, like, ever since you were a little girl, yes, I'm going to get married because that's what everybody else does? And I think that was sort of in the back of my mind. But I, it took me a long time to reconcile myself to getting married. My husband wanted to get married sooner than I did. We met in college and dated off and on for about 10 years after that. We dated other people seriously. and. Uh, I just wasn't ready. I mean, I loved being single. I loved having my own apartment, you know, I loved, and it wasn't until I think I finally realized that, as Rachel said, this is this my best friend. Mm -hmm. And I don't like, you know, having to wave goodbye to him every night, you know, and I just, I needed, I, we wanted, I wanted to live with him, you know, and I, I mean, not that we couldn't have done that without marriage, but it just, after living on my own for 10 years, there was none of this, oh gosh, I've never had a career, I mean, I didn't go through any of that like the women in the 50s did, where they mm -hmm. just went right into marriage and had no idea what it was like to be a career. You know, I worked, I still work, so none of that changed. And like she said, I wanted to, he's my best friend and we share a house together and it's, it's great. And I, I think she's making a lot of bizarre assumptions. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, she's making huge leaps there. I mean, I don't, certainly am no slave to my husband. If anything, he's probably a slave to me. He does more work around the house than I do. But. Uh, you know, she's making a big assumption. Well, historically, though, I think, um, like my mother's generation, uh, that that was the case. It's like you were his domestic slave. And even um, uh, in things like uh, the marital rights of the male, the male can have sex with you whenever he wants. And in states, even today, in 1992, a lot of states, a wife cannot bring a charge of rape against her husband because it goes back to the old English property laws, where the wife is the property of the husband. So, I mean, in a sense, this is pretty radical, but in a way, it's just another way of saying what really is, I think. But those laws, I don't think, are, are enforced. I mean, women do bring rape charges and mm -hmm. assault charges against their husbands. Now, I, don't, I can't tell you chapter and mm -hmm. verse how those things come out, but... And it's also, you know, it's up to the individual. Don't marry someone who's like that. I mean, you know, it took me, I mean, I've known my husband since college, and, you know, I think we know each other pretty well, and I think I know he's not going to assault me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we had no problem adjusting to who's going to do what chores. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have that second shift problem. You know, we both work, we both come home, we both share the work. It's not a problem, and I wouldn't stand for it. I don't know why women do. <laughs> I, I wouldn't marry someone like that, ever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I have too much respect for myself to be a slave to anybody emotionally or physically or anyone. We have to hear from Saletta. She's That's sitting over right. there nodding her head. head away, yeah. Well, I met my husband when we were, I was about 13 years old, and we went together for a while, and then we broke up, went with other people, and then 
in college and he graduated and we started going back together again just before he graduated and we got married uh, about two weeks after I graduated from college um, in the 50s, 58, and I have been married 34 years. <laughs> but it's been a good marriage, but I do believe that you must remain an individual. Now these people that say, oh, I'll have to ask my husband, uh, um, see what he thinks, you know, when someone calls, will you buy this or that other? You have to remain an individual. And I know one time someone asked this question, my husband's retired military, we were at a party and they said to me, who are you? And I knew what they were getting at, and I didn't want to say, I'm Colonel Sanders' wife. I said, I'm Salada Dyke Sanders. They said, no, 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 I mean, who are you? I said, that's who I am. <laughs> and I never answered them, but I think a lot of this is in, you must be an individual. And my husband always wanted me to, you know, say what I thought and, and be an individual. And when we were married, we were in Europe for three years, and. Um, um, work with dogs. I joined a German dog club. I didn't speak any English, but I felt like this would be a good way to learn some um, of the German. And so he, while he was in the army, I was out working with German mm -hmm. shepherds. And I love this. And I think um, you really do have to be an individual and not say everything your husband <clears throat> says. And I think you have to have a commitment because um, if you take a path with no obstacles, it probably isn't going anywhere. And you're going to have problems with marriage. They're going to be, um, all type of things are going to happen, but if you have a strong commitment together, you can work them out. Well, that's great. I think it's wonderful that at the party you refuse to say, I'm Mrs. So-and-so, because that's one thing, um, up until recently, everyone automatically took their husband's name. And have you all changed your names to your husband's name? Mine's hyphenated. Hyphenated, so we've got the compromise mix there. No, I, I, I took his very life <coughs> gladly. Okay. I, I went from <laughs> Fenberg to Roth. <laughs> I went through the first part of my life with everyone slaughtering my last name, so I gladly. So you got, and you didn't feel like you were losing a sense of what? who you had been for the past 20 no, some years or all. something? Not at all? Not at all. See, you now I have to admit, I go way out there on that one. I think the idea of taking your husband's name is, is obnoxious. I see no, I mean, in your case, I can, if you have a name that's, that's you know, bothered <laughs> you or it's hard to spell or yeah. you never liked it, you know, I, I can say, you know, I can see saying, hey, I'd rather take the shorter name. But to me, I mean, I remember going through this with my father. He couldn't understand why. I mean, I ended up hyphenating mine because I, I tried to get my husband to hyphenate his. I wanted him to hyphenate his. I was going to ask you it, if he did. He just didn't want to. I don't know whether it was professional. You know, he had his reasons and I thought, hey, it's not, not a big deal. But... I, I feel really strongly that I think it's obnoxious that women, I mean, I see no reason for it because what you're saying is, my name means nothing, I'm meaningless, my husband's everything. Mm -hmm. I now belong to him, and why doesn't he take your name? It, to me, exactly. it's a tradition that I find exactly. disgusting. And when my father questioned me, I said, Dad, I'm proud of the name Douglas. You know, it's, you, know you should be proud of it too, it's your name. Right. And that gave him pause, you know, when I said I'm proud of my name, you know, I don't want to lose it, he, then he could see. But I think that kind of whole thing goes back to when you have the one name, you're unified into one unit. And supposedly, in our traditional history and through our laws and culture, it's not two different people. As you were saying, it's so important to be an individual, <coughs> but supposedly marriage isn't an individual. It's two people becoming like the better half makes the whole. And it's not two different people, it's one unit, which I don't think is a good thing either. But traditionally and historically and legally, that's the way it's always been looked at. Like a woman couldn't get credit in her own name, right. those kinds of right. things. Um, it's hard because um, even, um, I'm very firm that I don't think that men should have, you know, okay, they can play tennis at 12 o'clock. This is their time because I've had some real fights. They want to kick me off the court at 12 o'clock. This is my time. You're off. Get away. No, I'm not going to leave until I finish this set. I'm sorry. You're just going to have to stand over there. I don't believe in you know uh -huh. this but of course um i think that um i know i remember one time in germany the car broke down well i tried to get it fixed they wouldn't listen to me because i was a woman absolutely wouldn't listen to me so i borrowed my friend's husband and took him with me and i didn't let on i mean i really wasn't being dishonest i didn't say this is not my husband here was a man this was a symbol here he said, let's get the car fixed now. I want it fixed right now. I don't want any more of this going around. And they fixed it. But he never knew that this wasn't my husband. It's right. really not right. That happens a lot of times. And I'm sure single women have that same problem. Of course, that's not 
exactly what you're talking <laughs> about that, but um, I think sometimes that a man can get more done than a woman. Oh, I think that's true. I mean, I had a similar experience where a repairman came to the house to fix something, and he said, well, maybe we should wait till your husband comes home. You know, and he just assumed I was married, and I was furious, you know. No, you don't wait till my husband comes home, even if I am married. You know, you just deal with me. Right. But, of course, mm -hmm. that was beyond his Neanderthal uh, right. capacity to understand that. But uh, So one thing I wanted to um, get back to is that you all kind of, I guess, got married for love. Mm -hmm. And did you all think about the religious or legal implications of, of what you were doing? Did, it, did there, any of you sign prenuptial agreements? No, we no. didn't. I mean, I don't think no. either my husband nor I had enough to really warrant that. Oh, we I sure mean, did. We didn't have it. I mean, I always think of, you know, people with a lot of money doing mm -hmm. that, and we, you know, neither of us really were bringing that much money into it. But I, religious, neither my husband nor I is, is religious. We don't go to church, and we really don't practice any, I think we have sort of personal view, views on that, but you know, for us, it was simply we were ready to take that, make that commitment, and do it publicly. And you know, I don't think you have to get married to do that. I think you can make other public statements. But for us, it's what we want. You know, it seemed like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But you know, we were talking before the show started about um, the marriage vows. Now, I know in the '50s, I didn't like that word "obey." And I told him, I said, I'm sorry. And he was very nice, you know, said, it's okay. So I told the preacher, take it out. I don't want it in there. I don't like it. I think it, I think it's tacky. So um, <laughs> he took it out and that was fine. But um, Sandy said the same thing. And she said her mother did My you? mother did too. Did, did too, so. That's great. Um, but nobody did it back uh, in 58. That was kind of unheard of. Well, and I think they probably just repeated those vows. Yeah, I didn't think what they thing meant. of them, you know, well, that's that never... kind of, I guess, what I was trying to get to with my question. Do you even think about what marriage, <coughs> the, the implications of marriage are legally and, and personally, or do you just kind of grow up with this cultural expectation of, you know, the fairy tale marriage and they lived happily ever after? You know, I mean, all the stories kind of stop at the marriage and they don't tell you what happens after well, they get married, you know. I, I think a lot of what you're talking about has probably the way you were raised and what kind of marriage your parents have. Mm -hmm you know, bear on that. Now, my parents just celebrated their 41st wedding anniversary, so, you know, they're kind of unusual. I mean, well, you've, you've been married 34 years, but, you know, I was raised in a home where they were very loving and mm -hmm. had a very strong marriage. Now, my husband's parents are divorced and both have remarried. Um, but, you know, we both feel the same way, you know, about, you know, we never had a problem making that commitment. I mean, I think if I were from a divorced, you know, situation mm -hmm. with divorced parents, it might have given me pause. I might have wondered, hey, you know, I saw this explosion in my family. Do I want that? But it didn't seem to, I mean, luckily my husband seems really well adjusted on that. You know, he doesn't, he didn't see that as a, a big problem. And, and you know, mo both of his parents are happy now. They married the people that they should have married t to begin with. And, but, and I was also raised, I think, in a family where my mother was the traditional wife in that she didn't have a job outside the home. but. She was an incredibly capable woman. I mean, she never sat around watching soap operas. She was always working. She was always doing things. You know, she can rewire a lamp and you name it, she can do it. Now she's running her own business with my father, but she's really the main mm -hmm. person who's running it. So that helped me too. I mean, I wasn't raised in a, I don't think, in a suppressed atmosphere or I never saw my mother being submissive to my father or anything like that or not expressing her views or. So I think that contributes to how your own marriage turns out. Yeah, how, how, you, how the culture treats you and also how your family, what your own history is. And I'd just, yeah. like, just like to remind everybody that this is a call-in show, and if you'd like to call in with some comments, you may do so at 524-2388, and we'll be glad to uh, check out what you have to say. And I know um, you said earlier, Sandy, that uh, you didn't have a lot of financial assets when you first got married, so I just want to posit a question for the whole group. Say uh, you bought a lottery ticket and won $10,000. Would you uh, immediately sit down and write your husband a check for five grand, or would you not tell him about it, or would you start your own bank account, or what, uh, what would you do? Anybody? I would just put it in our checking or <coughs> savings account. You know, I wouldn't think twice about it. I mean, I, he would do the same for me, and we would like to spend our money on things together most of the time anyway. Although I do buy more clothes than he does, but <laughs> that's okay. So you would just put it into the communal pot, no second thought yeah. about it? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Unless 
he decided, oh, no, it's your money. Spend it on something you want. And then maybe I'd go buy a new car. Which I was actually thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I would do. Yeah. How about either of you? You've touched on an interesting, I think it's sort of a hot issue in marriage and finances, because they always say that mm -hmm. the number one thing that couples fight about is money, and I think that's pretty true. But for me, that was a real issue for me when we got married, because my husband makes about twice or three times what I do. And, you know, I said that I definitely wanted my own checking account. I wanted him to have his checking account, and I want my money. We have automatic deposits, so his paycheck goes into his checking account, and my paycheck goes into my checking, my checking account. And he pays the mortgage, and I pay the bills. But I said it's real important for me to write those checks out for those bills. I don't want any of this, oh, all, my, all of our money is going in one place, and you're mm -hmm. managing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need to know that my, it's my money. I'm working for it. It's going into my checking account. And this is my contribution to the household. So if I won the lottery, it would probably go into my, I mean, we'd probably sit down and talk about it. But we'd probably end up putting some in savings. But, you know, because I'm, even though we have separate checking accounts, we, we do have communal, like mm -hmm. Rachel was saying. We sit down and discuss what are we going to spend our money on mm -hmm. for the most part. But I think that's a real hot issue because some women, you know, their husbands have to know every penny that they're spending, and mm -hmm. I couldn't stand. I mean, yeah. I work. I've got a yeah, salary. It's, it's none of your business absolutely. what I'm buying. If we're I choose to tell like you, fine. But all. and when we when we did get married, we were wondering, you know, should we consolidate our checking accounts or not? Because we'd had separate checking accounts for years. You know, we went to college together, but we weren't married, um, so we had separate accounts. So we were like, well, should we just keep them? Should we start, you know, a third checking account that's together? But we decided, why not just consolidate them? I think um, um, if I won the lottery, first thing I do is get his used sports car painted because I'm tired of hearing him talk about wanting to get it painted. But no, <laughs> I wouldn't mind mind doing that because I know he would probably want to do something um, for me. But I have seen. Um, I, I remember a friend I had once. And she couldn't tell her husband anything she bought. He would go into an absolute rage. Hmm. And so she says, I've got to show you some shoes I bought. Just a minute. Hidden on the top shelf of the closet. Oh, she went in and got these shoes. That, that goes stand. on today. I mean, yeah, oh, I've does. seen that. Oh, he had a asking temper. permission. I mean, yeah. that's obnoxious in my opinion. You know, I make a salary. I have money. I'm not going to ask your permission. I mean, that's a, unless it's something outrageous or unless yeah. it's something that I don't personally mm -hmm. have the money for. But we don't really don't ask each other permission. We spend our money that we make at our jobs. Now, if we have children and you know I decide to stay home, that'll probably be a big problem for me because I don't like the idea of having to ask for money. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of having my own money. So I think a lot of men we'll have can to hold that out. over women too if say a woman was like that. Not my husband. He's so very generous. <coughs> but, um, um, I think they could. They would hold it over. And that goes back to some of these old laws too, you know. You right, where the, right, woman, the woman herself had no money. Mm -hmm. right, had no money of her own, had no property of her own. She was considered property. But you know, husband. Carol, some women like to be beaten up. They are women that absolutely, if they married a man that would beat them up and they divorce them, they'll turn right around and marry another man just like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't understand it. I've seen this. Mm -hmm. And I think, they are crazy. Why would they do that again? Well, they've got, that's a psychological issue, I yeah, think. I think yeah, I think it probably a, would be. But um, um, some, some women I have seen, I'll say, what do you think about this? Well, Mr. Brown says so and so. In right. other words, and this, uh, this drives These are me women up a with wall. no self-esteem. Right. No, because yeah. that's the way we're raised. I mean, my, yeah. I never. My mother wasn't like. I mean, she mm -hmm. went to Smith College, has a degree, very intelligent. You know, she never had to ask my husband's. You know, in fact, if anything, a lot of times he defers to her. I mean, she has expertise in areas that he doesn't have, and vice versa. So, I just. To me, yeah. it's what you make of it. I mean, I like I said before, I wouldn't marry a man like that, and neither mm -hmm. would anybody that I know. You know, you'd mm -hmm. be nuts. I mean, you, you marry some. I mean, my husband had a subscription to Ms. Magazine, so I mean, he's a Whoa. sometimes he's a bigger <laughs> feminist great. than I am. So, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm lucky. I don't have a lot of the problems. He doesn't have a lot of male hang-ups, and he, you know, he doesn't. He's a mm -hmm. he's a feminist. He's been on pro-choice marches with me and everything else. So, I don't know whether I'm really lucky or whether. 
there are a lot of men out there like that, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only man I could have married. <laughs> I couldn't marry a man that wanted me to ask his permission and had a lot of male, yeah. you know, typical male ego attitudes. And Well, it, it's when you say like the women with low self-esteem and, and it's like the old joke that women go to college for the MRS right, the M degree. Right. You know, they just want to go for a semester or two, meet some guy, and then just l kick back and eat bonbons or something. But uh, I think the And I think there are still women out there yeah, like that looking yeah. for a rich man, to, you know that's what you're interested in. <laughs> There's even a book in the library when I was doing some research called How to Marry a Rich Man and I just thought that I can't disgusting. believe yeah. that there are women out really there disgusting. reading it. Yeah. And actually one thing that did surprise me when you go check the, the catalog at the library under marriage is literally four or five hundred <coughs> books and it seemed to me that they were all geared towards women. It was like how to prevent his affair you know oh, what know. you can well, do all the to self-help you know, books are like that. Yeah, it's, it's it all the woman's fault. You know, women, women who mm -hmm. marry men who do right, such and such. Right. I mean, they don't have those books for men. They don't obviously don't think it's a real major problem for them. I know. <laughs> it just I just thought where, where's the book for men to prevent her affair? Well, and look you at know, the magazines. <laughs> I mean, everything from Mademoiselle to Cosmo. They've all got articles right. on how to improve your relationships. And if you pick up GQ, you're not going to see those. Right. Or Playboy, for that matter. You're not yeah. going to see those. So let's see, another uh, a controversy question maybe, because I think, um, I know Rachel works and Sandy, you said wor you work, and mm -hmm. Sleta, you don't think you haven't, you haven't worked well, in marriage? Well, I've worked for the, oh, about the third year. Well, when, we got, when I got married, I just got my degree, and I was very excited I was going to be able to teach, so we went to Europe. So I go and apply for a job. They said, you don't have any experience. I said, uh. well, I just graduated. So we were over there for three years, and then when I came back, I, got, I waited a couple of years to teach, and then they said, well, your certificate has expired. Yeah. So I thought I couldn't win. <laughs> so, well, assuming that you could, and you were offered your dream job on the East Coast, and your husband was offered his dream job on the West Coast, on the same day of the month, same time, who would move where and why? I think we look at how much they paid. Yeah, I really. Who would I make the that, most money? Who would make I the most money? Which absolutely. Which would be the best well, for both I of us? I don't even know if it would be who would make the most money, but what decision would be the best for both of us? Mm -hmm. I mean, because we've had to make those decisions. Just last year, we had to make that decision, and it turned. You know, you just have to look at the issue and decide. Okay, what's going to be the best for both of us in the long run? And we always seem to choose the right way. You just you have to not be completely selfish, but by the same token, you can't be completely self, you know, willing to just give up everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'll follow you, honey, wherever you go. No, no, no. You've got to look at every aspect of it before you make a decision, and you need to make that decision together. You need to talk about it and look at all the angles before you just decide, oh, well, he's the man, he's got more money, the bottom line is, it, money yeah. shouldn't be the bottom line. That was interesting to me that yeah. you both said, oh, whoever makes the most money, because if it's your dream job, well, uh, and yeah, even I if guess it's I only 10 grand a year, it's like, you know, if yeah, that's I, what you've always wanted to do. It's something you definitely have to sit down and yeah. hammer out, and like you said, it would be what works for both of us. I was going to say my sister, here's an example, my sister's husband got a job in Ireland, and, um, and it's a temporary, you know, he works for, he's an animator for a movie studio, and they have a a studio they opened up in Ireland and my sister was working for my parents business and for her it was number one a great adventure to go to Ireland you know that's a great mm -hmm. adventure but I also she has two children and I think she was ready for a break and this job was going to give them enough financial security that she could do that now when I say a break when you have two children it's not much of a break but in terms of <laughs> doing both you know having the outside job and having the kids was, right. was a lot to handle and I think it gave her the opportunity to raise the children so that worked for them you know. Well, speaking of breaks, we have to take a quick <laughs> break now for our token two. It's that time again, so sit back and here comes our token two. Hi, I'm John. Uh, my wife Dorothy and I are just uh, celebrating 30 years of marriage. So a major part of my life has been a married life. And uh, it's been so fulfilling. We have three children. And uh, what a wonderful life that it has been. I believe that there are principles in life, and everyone in this era, just like in so many other uh, points in history, are seeking fulfillment and joy and happiness. And I find them in the principles of marriage. Uh, there's a principle that uh, says that uh, we are to replenish the earth. And that happens through traditional marriage. And in that, there is a fulfillment and a joy 
and a happiness that uh, is hard to find, or I don't know where else you could find it, other than a man and a woman uh, being happily married with the, the same ideals, the same desires, and raising a family and enjoying the, the fellowship of family. There's so much said today about family. And family comes through traditional marriage. And the joy of family comes through traditional marriage and watching our children grow and uh, experiencing the real things in life, things that have eternal value to them, that are not just temporal or temporary. But uh, today, and like all sophisticated societies, there are many other choices being made trying to find this fulfillment and happiness. The only place I know that you can find real happiness in marriage is in traditional values of the home and the family of a man and a woman enjoying their life together. And I certainly have for 30 years with my wife, Dorothy. Well, welcome back from our token two. Um, we've sp been speaking about marriage for the last half hour or so, and I would like to talk a little bit about, I guess, some of the alternatives to marriage. I had the, uh, the pleasure of being invited to a commitment ceremony between two women at a Unitarian church recently, and that was very interesting. And there are alternatives to marriage. There are, uh, you can live in sin, which if you don't have any religious preferences, it's not living in sin, but society would like say that you're living in sin. Um, I just wonder what the alternative, you Sandy had said earlier that you could have not married, but you chose to marry. Mm -hmm. And if you hadn't chosen to marry, would you have lived just together? And I don't think so. We never, we didn't live together until we were engaged and we bought a house together. And my opinion on it was when I'm ready to make to me, it was the same commitment to move in with him. When I'm ready for that, I'll be ready for marriage. There's no reason to do, and, and I, we knew each other well enough that I didn't have any issues of, oh my gosh, are we gonna be mm -hmm. at each other's throats over the toothpaste and stuff like that. So that was it for me. I mean, to, to move in with someone to me was a huge leap, a huge commitment. I mean, mm -hmm. that was what I couldn't get over. So I thought, when I'm ready for that, I'll be ready for marriage. So I just never, I leapt over that step, I guess. Some people feel they really need it, though. Yeah, I know in um, the District of Columbia, they recently passed a domestic partnership law, or are trying to pass it, I believe, and I think that would be a good thing because marriage, in its legal capacity, does <coughs> offer us so many different benefits, tax benefits, insurance benefits, that aren't open to anybody unless you're the heterosexual couple. And I know even in recently, um, like 25 years ago, you couldn't get married to a black man or woman if you were white in the state of Virginia. You know, I mean, there's so many so social pressures against the people who get married have to be the same color, the same you know, socioeconomic class, the same education level. I just wondered if you all had any thoughts about you know, marrying or being with somebody or how we should treat people who are different maybe, who want to get have those same benefits of a close relationship of marriage. Well, I, um, I feel very strongly that married, you should get married. I would never live with anybody. If I wanted to live with them, I'd just marry them. That's just the way I feel, but that's, I wouldn't down anybody that does that. That's their opinion that I would be very respectful of them, but I just think of this, uh, when you're ready for marriage, you know, you have a strong commitment. It's like I said about the paths. Um, if they're, some people are afraid of any type of obstacle or anything, and I think that's probably why a lot of people never get married. But I would rather see someone get married and have three divorces than not marry at all. But that's mm -hmm. just my opinion. And really, see, I think that's that. It's just the. I, I would think just the opposite. It's better not to marry at all than to get be like Mickey Rooney or Elizabeth Taylor and get married seven or eight times. Because that way, it's like what, what meaning does the marriage have? That that's sort of how I feel but. too. I think when you get married, it should be that one person that you know. But they think, they think, they well, think. They think. That's true. At the time, they may think. But. They wouldn't marry him if they thought they were going to divorce him tomorrow, unless maybe he that's was a. True billionaire or something. Some people have ideas like that, but no way. Well, I mean, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I think it's time to cut the cake. So, Saleta, could you do us the honors of, uh, yeah. we'll just take Mr. Uh, Bride and, Mr. Groom, excuse me, and Ms. Bride, and we'll uh, demolish them. Do you want me to take them off or leave them well, on? However you want to do it. And notice they both have the same color hair. And They're the very waspy. Thank looking. you all for joining us on the uh, bridal edition of uh, Girl Talk. Hope you had a good time, and we'll see you next month. <laughs> Cutting off the condo. Go ahead and cut it.